Hey there guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. Today we're going to be starting to take a bit of a closer, more in-depth look at some of the Orc units from their brand new 9th edition codex and taking a look at their rules, their abilities, their weapons and what culture traits and stratagems work particularly well with them. At the moment this is going to look slightly different from the Dark Angels and Space Marine ones that we've seen before and that's mainly because GW haven't updated the app yet, and it isn't getting updated until the codex actually releases, so I can't do, as far as I'm aware, those really nice, clean, white, squarish panels with the rules and the profiles all nicely laid out, which is a shame, it is actually quite annoying because I like that layout, but we will make do with images from the codex itself. And rest assured, I will of course switch back to that nicer, neater style when the app does officially update. It's just, as I said, something of a pain that they haven't done it already. Anyway, I thought today we would have a nice, quick, easy one to get things started, and so let's take a look at an orc character that I actually really quite like. I think he's really fun and definitely fits with the theme of the crazy orcs and their lore and their aesthetic, and I actually think he is surprisingly good in this edition as well. So let's get started with our first official 9th edition Orc Codex unit review with boss Zagstruck. So first off, before we get started, let's just go through a couple of the rules that have changed in the new Orc Codex that boss Zagstruck now has, or has lost. The old Daka 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 rule is of course now gone, which to be honest isn't really a huge loss to Zagstruck. He does have some shootier capabilities in his Blitz missiles, but honestly they're not worth writing home about now, and they weren't worth writing home about even before with Daka Daka Daka. Mob rule is gone on him too, which makes sense as it is now a clan mob specific ability, and as an individual model he can never be under half strength anyway, so this new version would literally have no impact on him whatsoever. And then the orc army rule of Here We Go has, as I'm sure many of you already know, changed in a very slight but very significant way. Now, instead of being able to reroll one or both dice for your charges, you simply reroll charges, so you reroll both dice. This is quite honestly a very big hit to the orcs, and especially for units like Zagstruck that can come in via Deep Strike. It means that on average, you don't make that 9 inch charge, having an average of around a 47% chance of making it, whereas before with the old Here We Go, you on average did just make the charge with around a 52% chance of making it on 2d6. So again, it's not a huge, huge difference in terms of actual numbers, but in actual gameplay terms, that is huge. Especially from a reliability and a psychological perspective, you go from an average pass to an average fail. And that really, really does make you have to stop and consider those 9 inch charges a lot more than you would have had to do back in 8th edition. And like I said, unfortunately this is a change which can impact on Zagstruck quite significantly depending on how you want to deploy him on the table. But now onto some of the good news. He has a few more bespoke abilities and rules which are still very, very good and for 6 power or 110 points, you get an, in my opinion, incredibly strong stat line. Zagstruck comes in with a movement of 12 inches, weapon skill 2+, an orky ballistic skill of 5+, a whopping 6 for his strength, toughness, wounds and attacks, a fairly average leadership of 7 and another fairly average 4 plus save. It is an incredibly beefy profile that, save for the ballistic skill and the save, puts most marine HQs to absolute shame, and it really does mean that he can zip around the board incredibly fast, shrug off anything up to and including heavy bolters and the like with fairly relative ease, and then slam into the enemy lines with an enormous number of high strength, highly accurate attacks. And I will say, I don't want to keep comparing his old profile to his new one, but there is a big thing to note which is his jump in toughness didn't go from toughness 5 to 6, he's jumped from toughness 4 to toughness 6, which gives him an incredible boost 
to his survivability against anything from strength 3 all the way up to strength 6, and then also strength 8, 9 and 10 weapons, so even on his base profile alone, without considering any of his other rules or saves or anything, he is much much harder to kill than he was before, with an average of 5 strength 4 bolter shots needed to cause a wound on a toughness 6 model, whilst every 3 strength 4 shots would be getting through before on his old toughness 4, so it's an extra 2 bolter shots just to get a wound through on him with his new toughness 6 profile. As we mentioned just before, on the rules front he has Here We Go, which has been nerfed, but despite that, it is still a reroll of your charges, so it does make it that much easier for him to reach combat compared to a lot of other melee HQs, and he has the brand new version of the WAG ability. Now, he didn't actually have the old advance and charge within 6 inch aura that war bosses had back in 8th, so this is just a flat, straight up buff for Zagstruck now that he gets this, and as we've seen from Warhammer Community, it is an unbelievably powerful army wide bonus that gives all of your core and character units the ability to charge even if they've advanced this turn, and then on top of that, for two whole turns, gives your entire army plus one attack. And that not only turns your entire force into an incredibly fast, incredibly scary melee threat, but for Zagstruck himself, it lets him absolutely jet across the board with his 12 inch move and then an advance on top of that, and still make a charge, all while pushing him up to a terrifying 7 attacks in melee, and as we will see, he can quite honestly be terrifying when he starts swinging and kicking into your opponent. I will say there is a downside with this, and I will cover it a bit more later on, but to call a warg, the person calling it has to be your warlord, and quite honestly, as good as Zagstruck is, there are quite a few reasons why you wouldn't make him your warlord, and instead go for a custom built war boss or beast boss. So whilst I'm not denying that the warg rule is incredibly powerful, you will probably have it on another character, and it probably won't be Zagstruck that actually calls it very often. He will still benefit from it, of course, being a character, it's just when we are looking at his profile and considering his overall set of rules and abilities, this particular one, whilst he has it, he personally won't actually be using it from his profile very often, if you get what I mean. In terms of his other rules, he has the full throttle ability, which ties in very nicely with the WAG rule, letting him just add 6 inches to his move instead of rolling a d6 when he advances, which makes him an incredibly nimble 18 inch move model, that can potentially during a warg turn charge after he's moved those 18 inches, so that gives him a massive 30 inch threat radius in turn 1 if you choose to, to do a warg in turn 1, and whilst honestly calling a warg in turn 1 isn't the best idea, normally you'll find people doing it in turn 2 or 3 I would think, but on the flip side, if you have an army full of bikes and storm boys led by Zagstruck, you could in theory do an army wide turn 1 charge. It's honestly not out of the question, and while that may not be the most competitive thing to do against a lot of armies, that sounds really really fun to me. Just just advancing your whole army, calling the warg and then charging them all in, like having almost every single unit in your army in combat turn 1 is actually a possibility with orcs, and I'm definitely going to try that sometime because that just sounds absolutely amazing. He does take a mortal wound on the roll of a 1 after you've done the full throttle move, but to be honest, with 6 wounds, that isn't too bad. And then even if you do unluckily roll a 1, his next ability can also help with that because with his cyborg body, every time you roll a wound, or you get wounded, should I say? you ignore it on the roll of a 5+. plus. So this gives him a pretty significant boost to his survivability, not only against things like mortal wounds and psychic powers and snipers, but even against regular weapons like bolters, this effectively means that a enemy 10-man intercessor squad rapid firing into you will go from doing 2.9 unsaved wounds to just 1.9 unsaved wounds. And then even against minus 3 or minus 4 AP weaponry, you won't be getting your armor save, but you will still have a small chance to shrug off some of those wounds 
thanks to the five up shrug. And this pretty much means that whilst things like las cannons and dark lances and melter are still plenty scary to Zagstruck, they're not quite as scary as they would have been if he didn't have his cyborg body. Interestingly though, unlike other war bosses and even the other named boss uh, Snickrot, Zagstruck doesn't have the brand new dead tough rule which gives orc bosses a 5 up invulnerable save and I don't know if that's intentional due to the fact that he has the 5 up shrug or if it has been missed and that will be something that they might add in later in an errata. It does seem weird that even boss Snickrot has the rule but Zagstruck doesn't because neither of them are war bosses, they're just bosses. So I don't quite understand why Zagstruck doesn't have it, but my my kind of gut feeling is that he's not meant to and it won't get added. But if it does get added and he does eventually get the dead tough rule, that 5 up invulnerable will be another huge bump to his durability, letting him tank a lot more minus 2 AP weapons as well as giving him that 5 up invun and 5 up shrug against stronger scary attacks that may get sent his way. His final two unique abilities relate to his interaction with the orc unit that he is most well associated with and that is the storm boys. First up is his storm boys strike which essentially lets you place him into reserve and deploy him in your reinforcement step of the movement phase. It is a great way to keep him safe from fire if you aren't sure he would survive if your enemy goes first but also allows you to be quite reactive in terms of where he does eventually come down onto the board. But it is worth bearing in mind, as we mentioned, the nerf to Ear We Go does mean that it is a significantly riskier prospect to think about deep striking him in and hoping to get off that 9 inch charge. It is still entirely possible, of course, and you do still have the Ear We Go reroll, so it is more likely than just, say, a unit of Terminators deep striking in. But if you do drop him in, and you fail that charge, you have in all likelihood just thrown him and whatever squad he came down along with to enemy fire. Next turn you've just completely thrown him away because he will get shot off the board by pretty much everything that's in range. I think that with his really fantastic move and the full throttle ability, I would argue that you don't always need to think about the Storm Boys strike rule. With Fly, he can just deploy behind cover and then still get up the board a good distance with his potential 18-inch move, get to where you need him to be, and then if you want to charge on turn 2, call a WAG and then do that with the rest of your army. I just don't think that the Stormboy strike ability is beneficial enough to someone that can potentially move 18 inches in a turn anyway. And then finally, he has another pretty funky rule in Drill Boss. And with Mob Rule, now just letting your mob units count as not being under half strength if they're within 6 inches of another mob unit that isn't under half strength, morale is absolutely much more of a scary prospect for Orcs in 9th edition. And whilst I think that in general, sort of like game-wide, morale is less punishing in 9th than it is in 8th, it is still entirely possible that your mob of Storm Boys could lose a few models, fail a morale test, then have to roll another 10 or 11 or 12 dice to see if any more run away from combat attrition. So you could lose a load more models by failing that initial morale test. With Drill Boss, however, you halve the number of models that flee due to combat attrition. So if you had to roll those, say, 12 dice from a full squad of 15 Storm Boys and you were really unlucky and rolled four ones or even six ones. Normally that would be four or six more boys running away, but with this you just halve it and only two or only three run away. It is honestly quite a powerful interaction with the way the orcs now have to think about morale and combat attrition and whilst it's not as good as it was in eighth where storm boys within six inches just automatically pass morale, that in general seems to be a rule that they are trying to actively do away with across all the armies in 9th edition, so this is, in my opinion, a relatively decent replacement which will help to keep more of your Storm Boys around for as long as possible. And of course, the other benefit is that it is a 6 inch aura, so if you have uh, Zagstruck with a couple of units of Storm Boys, they can both benefit from this, and you can potentially be saving yourself, you know, a couple 
two or three or four models fleeing every single turn, which does add up over the course of a game. Tying in with this is his Warlord trait, which is Big Gob, which means that his 6 inch aura for Drill Boss is extended to 9 inches. It is honestly not a great Warlord trait, I would say it's arguably one of the weakest in the entire codex, and you're not likely to have your Storm Boys over 6 inches away from Zagstruck anyway due to lookouts there and that kind of thing, but I will say, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's almost not worth worrying about because it's very unlikely that you will be taking Zagstruck as your Warlord anyway unless you are playing a really small game and you only have one HQ. The sheer customization in relics and Warlord traits and other useful abilities that an unnamed war boss or beast boss can access just makes them so much better as a pick for your Warlord 99% of the time. So much like the Warg rule, this is one that it's nice to have on Zagstruck, but in all honesty, it probably won't actually come up in your games very often at all. What will come up in your games often, however, is the fact that Zagstruck is a member of the Goth clan, and that means he benefits from the unbelievably cool culture which is no mucking about, which gives Zagstruck not only an extra one strength on the turn that he has charged or heroically intervened, but crucially, with his 6 attacks and 7 during a warg, each hit roll of 6 counts as 2 hits, and this is a massive, massive boost to his potential damage output, giving him up to 12 hits from his 6 base attacks on his profile alone, and as we are just about to see, his attacks are really quite mean. <laughs> but first off, before we get to the fun stuff, let's look at his shooting. With a ballistic skill of 5+, plus, this won't take long. He has a slugger, fine, great, don't forget to shoot it if you're locked in combat, but apart from that, don't really worry about the slugger. His main shooting attack is his blitz missiles, which sound pretty nasty with an 18 inch range, assault d3, strength 6, minus 1 AP, d3 damage profile with blast, and I would say it is absolutely worth a punt if you see a squad of intercessors on an objective. You have a 14% chance, I think, with average rolling of doing the two wounds to kill off a marine, so you could potentially clear them off an objective, and obviously with Blast, shooting at bigger 10-man plus squads of enemies gets you those guaranteed three shots, so I would say don't forget that the Blitz missiles are there, just don't really expect too much from them, and I certainly wouldn't leave my last game winning shot to rely on it, but over the course of a few turns you could realistically kill a couple of marines, or a fair few Tyranid Gaunts or Guardsmen with it. But enough of the shooting, let's move on to the fun stuff, his melee profile. As we saw, Zagstruck has 6 attacks base, and his main weapon is the Vulture's Claws. Previously, these were his special weapons which you could only make a maximum of 3 attacks with, but now that clause has gone and you can do his full 6 attacks with these weapons and their profile is an eye-wateringly good strength plus 2, minus 3 AP, flat 2 damage, which means that he is swinging with 6 strength 8, minus 3 AP, 2 damage attacks with no penalty to hit at weapon skill 2+, plus, making them essentially just a much much better power fist, but that's not all. Remember, he is a goth, so now all of a sudden they're hitting at strength 9 on the charge and 6s to hit are generating 2 hits, which means that not only are marines and the like just going to absolutely melt underneath your feet, but even light, medium, or even heavier tanks and knights are actually all very valid targets for Zagstruck to go after. And to put it this way, if you get a charge off on the turn that you do a warg, with his 7 attacks you get around 7 hits, 6.9 to be precise, which then cause 5.7 wounds against marines, which after saves turns into 4.8 unsaved wounds, so you could realistically wipe out an entire 5 man combat squad of marines off an objective in a single round of combat with Zagstruck, which pretty much makes his entire points value back in one turn. Or even against something big and scary like a knight, he does on average 9.2 damage to it, 
So whilst I wouldn't always recommend just charging him into a healthy knight, if there's one which is hurt and down to its last few wounds or its last bracket, he really can reliably take out a good third or so of a knight's wound pool in a single combat phase. So he is a genuinely fantastic Swiss army knife style unit with enough attacks to wipe out smaller squads of enemies, as well as strong enough attacks to go after big individual units like tanks and knights. And then on top of that, if that wasn't enough for you, after all those attacks, he does have a chopper, granting him one more final attack. And you know, psh, you say, what's a chopper ever done? Well, remember, on Zagstruck, this chopper is swinging at strength 7 on the charge with minus 1 AP. So it's essentially an extra 1 damage auto cannon shot, just as an extra bonus attack. So if you think about it, all told, with a warg up, Zagstruck can potentially do a total of 14 strength 9 minus 3 AP 2 damage attacks and 2 strength 7 minus 1 AP 1 damage attacks, which for a 110 point unit is genuinely some terrifying damage output. And even just assuming average rolling, he will do an absolute number on pretty much anything you send him into, with hopefully the Storm Boys that should be along with him finishing off whatever may be left. When it comes to the stratagem front, there really isn't much. The Orc Codex as a whole is honestly pretty lacklustre when it comes to stratagems, but the one I do want to mention is the Goth specific one, Unbridled Carnage. It's 2 CP, so it may well be worth saving this for the actual Stormboy squad rather than Zagstruck himself, but if he's all that you've got in combat, this lets your no mucking about exploding sixes go off on fives instead. So yeah, fives and sixes cause two hits. I'll, I will just let that sink in. Essentially, this bumps his damage output during a warg with just his Vulture Claws alone from 4.8 unsaved wounds to those marines to 5.6 unsaved wounds, or against that knight, bumping you to 10.8 damage from the 9.2 it was before. So even before you count the extra chopper attacks, yeah, it's not a huge bump, but as with all things orky, Half the fun, in my opinion, is the what if, and this means that it's much easier to get those huge number of extra attacks with the exploding fives and sixes all the way up to the maximum possible 14 with his vulture claws. And I will be honest with you, with liberal use of a command point reroll as well, I could fully see Zagstruck on the charge and with Unbridled Carnage doing half the full wounds of a knight in one round of combat, which as I said, for his cost, is really, really impressive. I think when it comes to tactics with Zagstruck, obviously Storm Boys are the most logical bet. He can move up with them, he fits in fluff-wise nicely with them, and he can keep them around for that little bit longer with his drill boss ability. And with Storm Boys being a pretty reasonable 11 points per model in this codex, it's actually not a huge investment. 440 points gets you Zagstruck and two full 15-man squads of Storm Boys to send shooting up the board into your enemy lines. But I think the other thing that I would consider and is maybe slightly more competitive is replacing the Storm Boys with Bikers, which are now just incredibly good. He has the speed to keep up with them, and he still gets that lookout sir protection from them. And yes, he doesn't buff them with Drill Boss, but they are already so much more durable in Storm Boys with their three wounds, their toughness five, which is the same as Storm Boys, but then also their, their smoke cloud ability, which gives them minus one to be hit. So they will honestly last a lot longer than Storm Boys as you move up the board. And then if you choose not to advance as well, they bring some much stronger shooting with their Daka guns than the Storm Boys ever could. So I think whilst fluff wise, it's probably better to see Zagstruck with Storm Boys. From a competitive standpoint, Zagstruck moving up with a couple of squads of bikers. Maybe a bit more expensive, but I think overall it would probably be a lot more impactful on a game. And I think in general, the way I look at Zagstruck is that he is a fantastic support HQ. His Warlord trait and some of the other stuff that he has 
doesn't quite make him warlord material in my book, but if you bring him as your secondary HQ, he is a really solid, cheapish pick in a goff list, especially if you want something hard hitting to accompany your storm boys or your bikers in case they run into any enemies which their choppers might just bounce off. He has some really strong attacks to help get through that heavy armor whilst the choppers can, can go to work killing infantry while he deals with the heavier stuff. I think he is genuinely really, really good, really cheap and really impactful on the games if you use him well. And I think that if he does end up getting that dead tough rule, which as I said, I don't think he will, but I do have my fingers crossed that he does. He will also be incredibly tanky with a four up save, a five up in run, and then the five up to ignore wounds after that. But what do you think of Zagstruck? Have you used him in any games of 9th edition yet? And do you think he is better run with Storm Boys or with Bikers? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I will catch you later, guys.